Oh, now. look at you. I know. I Outstanding. Know. That's a professional <laughs> right now. Let's use it. Yeah. Together, because this is what bonsai is all about, is that we're talking with each other and, and playing with little trees. And like um, Dennis showed us some pictures of what's going on. We kind of talk about it. I mean, that's really where we get the most oomph out of being in a bonsai club. So yesterday was our first time. We had six members out yesterday. Um, uh, for the first, our ever first, like, you know, back together with some people, and this is our second one, so I thank you for coming out and stuff, and really want to thank Elsa again for all the effort of putting all this together and everything, so. I'm Elsa Durham, by the way. I'm the one who sent you all those annoying emails. Before we get really into it, I want to tell you about the two programs, what the beginner's program is. It's basically, fundamentally, it's two classes, one on potting and one on wiring. These are the two fundamental skills you have to have before you go into the more advanced skills like carving on wood and, and uh, grafting and those sorts of things. You can do bonsai without knowing the advanced tools, but these two basic skills, if you're going to do any bonsai, are really uh, a necessity. And that's why we teach it. We used to teach it many, many years ago in one class. That's a problem, first of all, there's a season for every skill and activity in bonsai that's related to the seasons and your plants. And it's best to do it then. And we decided that it's better to do each class uh, compatible with the season that we're in. So in the spring, we have the repotting season. And in the fall, we have the wiring season. Repotting shop, we're getting down to the skill that we're talking about here. Uh, and these are not normal pots. These are not the same kind of pot that you're going to buy to, to put a house plant in. This one doesn't have as big a hole as I would expect on a size on this particular. I, I'd expect a slightly bigger hole. But still, it has big drainage holes. Are you familiar with that in the pots? See the two big drainage holes here? This, these little holes right here are for wire but the big ones are for drainage. Uh, taking it out of one pot and putting it into a new pot, when you're using a new pot, prepare the new pot, and then you set it aside, and then you work on your tree. If you're putting it into, if you're repotting a bonsai that's already in the pot, what you do is remove it from the pot. When you remove it from the pot, you use an instrument like this, a scythe, a little hand scythe, and you go around the edge and you find, generally speaking, by the time I get around to repotting anyway, uh, the whole tree, once I've cut it away from the sides, just lifts out in one big root ball area. You take that, you set it aside. If you're going to put it back in the same pot, you go wash out the pot or do whatever you want to do, and then you prepare your pot before you touch that root ball on that tree. Okay, so to prepare this pot, we do, we, we're doing three things to get this pot fully prepared. We're going to put screen and we're going to put wire, we're going to make little staples out of wire that holds the screen in place over these large holes. Then we're going to put tie downs because we tie the bonsai in with wire. We run the tie down wires into the pot and then lastly we put this big pumice across the bottom in, in one or two levels and a deeper pot a little bit more and a, and a shallow pot a little bit less if you have a if you're doing a a, a deciduous bones bonsai a fairly large one and you've got a one and a half or one inch pot you just put a single layer of your drainage soil before you put the other soils in and there again, it depends on the thickness of your pot and what you're doing. Okay, and then you put this. After you get your pot prepared, it's going to be all ready. It's going to have these wires sticking out of it. It's going to have the, the uh, screen in the bottom. And it's going to have the drainage soil, the drainage pumice in it. You set it aside, and then you'll start working on your tree. The first thing you're going to do when you get these trees is you're going to clean it up. But what you're going to do is clean these trees. And what you do when you clean the trees, basically, looks like a little bush right now. You're going to find your main trunk line. You're going to go in and basically you're going to pinch out that 
juvenile growth that's right there next to the limb and the trunk. Yeah, if you want to get up and come closer and see, if you can't see, I'm going to bring this around and show it to you, but if you want to come over here, we can save that step, that next step. And so what I've, see, I've done it right here. You can see down here. See, like this, I would put that out. And what you end up with is instead of looking like a bush, it's going to all of a sudden, when you get this all cleaned up, you're going to be able to hold this baby up and it's, you're going to see a trunk and you're going to see limbs coming out of the trunk. You just do it right within uh, and, uh, half an inch to three quarters of an inch. You just clean it, see like clean this. Yeah. You do that. Half, yeah. You're exposing the trunk. Yeah, yeah, you're just exposing the limbs and you're exposing the trunk so that you can see and then all of a sudden you see your trunk line. Yeah, all mm -hmm. the way down. Sure. Yeah, okay. all the way. You do the whole tree this okay. way. You just go through and you pick those out. Shimpaku gives you an extra, what would I say, artistic choice over many of the junipers which don't have that uh, particular characteristic. Cool. Okay. And not only that, but look, they're nice and soft. Mm -hmm. Some of the junipers that we get around here will prickle your skin and you come away with all red hands. You turn the tree upside down with just the dirt. Like this. And you start taking the soil off because, look, you're going to put it in this pot. <laughs> okay. And we're going to take the soil off. You're, we're going to start getting dirty here anyway. Sorry about that. But you're going to take the soil off and you're going to take some. And basically, uh, the other thing you're going to do is you're going to decide what kind of tree this is going to be out of those five styles that I told you about. And you're going to have to find the nabari to do that. So after that comes from the top, you have to go down. And from yesterday, we found it wasn't very far because they've been in a pot for some time and they've gotten fairly substantial nabari. It's generally what I do is I set it down and you'll notice the little squares on the screen. I try to leave about three on either side of it. And we're gonna show you three ways to do these, actually. One is, is called the old new staple. And you take it down to a 90 degree, like this, and it's gotta go through the pot. So you go inside. Hmm. See, this is way too long. And we're gonna solve that. See, that's an easy problem to solve, is having the wire too long. There we go. Here's how I make a staple. I'm going to do the straight staple, and then Lad's going to show you how you do a butterfly. And I'm going to leave you to do the butterfly over here. I'm just going to show them what happens with this one. Okay? To do a staple, you lay the wire down about in half across there and about a half an inch out on either side of the outside of the hole. Okay, so you're holding it like this, and what you do is you just bend it like this. Now I've got some older folks here. Remember Zorro? <laughs> That's what I always think of when I do this. <laughs> See the old folks here. Oh yeah, we remember him when we were kids. And then you take your pliers and you Twice do this. You do it on a straight plane. You keep this on a straight plane. But you pull that together like that, and then open it up a little bit, and you do it over here to this loop. So in the end, you've got something that kind of looks like this. All right? Now, what I do, and the reason I turn these upside down because it's just easier to work in, the, the diameter of the hole is the same on both sides. And so then I lay it back down, and I'm eyeballing this generally. And so I've got it about right there. And I take, you take the pliers and you put it back over the part that's going to hold on the pot like this, 90 degrees down from it. All right first leg. Then I always stick it in the pot because they're sometimes not exactly even. They don't have to be exactly even. And I see that it's about right there. Okay. 
So the important thing here is that, the, that these two legs that I've made going down at 90 degrees are going to go through that hole. Like that. Butterfly one, just because you can see from Elsa's, this, that's an intricate work, man. You gotta be pretty good at what you do. This is for just the uh, people who are just trying to get by, okay? <laughs> so what I do is I take the wire, whoop, like this, and I just wrap it around my thumb, like that, and pull it over, turn it over, hmm. take it, turn it around my thumb, and this, I got big old fat thumbs, maybe it might be a little smaller, and so, Theoretically, that's kind of what it kind of looks like, okay? So usually though, if I can, you, you don't have to use your thumb to like wrap it around. You can just kind of give yourself a, a little bow. Around and round. You want it so that the wire is going over that wire there, right? You know, so that's the butterfly. That's very critical, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I like it too because it's adjustable. So you can move your little wires out for your hole now, you know what I mean? Where mm -hmm. else is, you gotta, you, Kind of have your precision and stuff like that. So this guy, you can take and you can just kind of go, oh, I'll move it in a little bit. Now it's the side on my hole, right? So, and again, kind of like Elsa's, once you get your in the hole width, then you just put it in your down there so it comes out the same way so it's going straight out. Because if you put it different angles, sometimes it'll flare out or in, depending on how it's going through the screen. And then, like she said, again, you put it through. And then what I like to do is I'll put my fingers on top of the, um, where it's pinching over, okay? And then I'll take my pliers and I just pull on it a little bit to get it so it's taut and then bend it over. Pull on it a little bit, taut, and then it's in there pretty good. Yeah. Right? And so, in the, and really, like Elsa was saying, for the screen, you just want it where it's not gonna be moving around so that, you know, now soil can go through where it's not gonna drain right. And then as she said too, you just kind of pinch off the end so you don't curl them up like that. How how much wire do you use for a tie down? Depends on your pot. Basically, two depends on that. If it's a deep pot, and this is a deep pot, this would qualify as a deep pot, you use the long side of the pot, two long sides and a short side. If it's if you're doing a deciduous tree and you've got one of those one and a half inch deep pots, you use two narrow sides and one long side. Each one of these go flat across this area right here. Mm -hmm. Because if you leave any gaps, you're gonna to have to cinch that up from the inside, pulling and twisting and pulling and twisting and pulling and twisting. If you eliminate any space here, you're going to minimize the amount of work you do later. If I'm home alone, and I've got them crossed. I don't want them crossed, I want them flat across the bottom. And you could go in, but you want that to sit flat across the bottom. And once you get them flat across the bottom, you turn the pot over. And I take it and pull up on it again. And just run it back here for the time being. Get it out of your way. It's got a lot of pliability to it. There. Where's our uh, bag of... Uh, there we go. Then what you do, you're almost done. You've done two steps. You've put in this, you've, step one, step two, step three is this. And then how, how, how did you choose the thickness of the wire? Uh, you use a one and a half or a two. Always. Uh, aluminum wire, yes. Okay. And always use aluminum wire on, on this, at this stage. And so there's your pot ready to ready to put your plant into, you set it aside, you go get a plant, you do what I showed you on this plant, you clean it up, you turn it upside down, you take it out of the pot, you find your nabari, you find where the top of that is going to be, and you put it in, and we will come around and show you how to tie these down. Long, probably cut it down to this, is that you would actually drive this into the root ball, and then you just take these wires around, and you're twisting it like this, and that's what's pinching it down. Oh, you're doing okay? it that way. Yeah, that's how they do it at the museum. 
Okay. So as long as as long as you have a good enough root ball, and these guys might not, you know what I mean? Because they, they're not they do solid. have a good root ball. Yeah, but if they've got a good one, you can actually just drive it. And at the museum, they have big pieces of bamboo and they use a mallet, man. They are like, they are just driving it into that root ball, pulling these uh, wires through, again, just twisting it down like that. And then that's gonna keep it in pretty solid. Instead of just birds like coming out of the hole, you just have to kind of pinch it open like that. So this one's pretty good. That one's probably good enough. Yep. That's why I do this. Yeah, I don't have to put around like this. Well, that's why I was watching that trick, and that was nice. The little Mickey Mouse ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have to put it around like this. Okay, I got that half here. On one side, so you want to hold your fingers like this. I'm ready for you. You want to take the wire? Straight up. Yep. Yep. I got it. Bonsai wires are definitely one of the main tools to get because these guys are so nice because you can actually take this when wire's on a tree and you can cut it and it will not damage any of the, uh, the bark or anything like that. So bonsai wire cutters are probably one of the number one tools to get yourself this one. Because when you're doing copper wire, you can't undo copper wire. You actually have to cut it in little spaces and take it off. And you don't want to be destroying your bark while you're trying to cut off that wire. But this will literally like if you have your finger like that and you just put it in that water, it will not cut. Yeah. I mean, it's an amazing little tool. Okay. So. All those old roots to kind of start flaring out from it. And that one's, that one's okay. I would leave those two. Yep, I would leave those guys. So how far down do you want to So no, not much further down now because we found under barring. Now you're going to work on the bottom half okay. to try to get it. And really, this is easier with the. Uh, oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Even towards the camp. Yeah. Bottoming up 
good. You just want to kind of keep on going around and around and just get it to drain itself out. 